Okay, okay, okay. Oh my goodness. This this is a young man. This is a young man. He's only 25, if 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 he's that old. And he's already penned two books, authored two books. And the first one is called The Tale of an Orphan Lessons to Learn. Put your hands together, man. The second book, and I love the title, man. The second book says, My Shoes Don't Fit. And the subtitle is A Young Man's Conversation with God. <laughs> Give it up, man. And this man also is the winner of the Africa Youth Award for Literacy in Excellence 2015. <laughs> oh, and there's so much more. But let's meet this guy. Put your hands together. Let us welcome Richard Takofi Boche. There we go. There, there. There. Oh my goodness, have a seat, Richard. Wow. <laughs> I'm finally on the show. You're finally on the show, and you we're, know, we're going to come right back. We're going to pause for a course, and when we come back, stick around, folks. We'll be right back. We're just getting started. The KSM Show will be right back. The KSM Show. Some time ago, man, I was traveling. I don't know where I was going, but uh, this young kid, well, man, met me at the airport. He said, oh, KSM, I've written a book. He said, oh, my tia, 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 tia. Then he whipped out this book for me. And it says, Tale of an Orphan, a lessons to learn. And he, he told me about how, as an orphan, some of the stuff he went through. And I'm like, wow, you know? So then, I how many years ago was that? That was last year. That was last year? Yeah, 26th of uh, April. Oh, you remember the date? Yes, 2015. Wow. I, was, I was just traveling to London. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was, going, uh, I was going for an, a show on the Pauline Long show in London. Mm -hmm. And I met you. It was just, it was just uh, I mean, amazing. Because I've been following you since 2005. Really? Yeah, when you had the, the Tango the Spider show. Uh -huh. Because that show spoke to me prophetically. That, you know, sometimes things are not... Uh, when things are not going well, when Jesus Christ was crucified on that Friday, it was dark in his life. But then he had to thank God because it was Sunday coming. So mm -hmm. that show spoke to me prophetically that whatever you're going through, you have to thank God because before you can see the Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, and today I want the KSM show. <laughs> 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 well, you saw me, they told me I had written this book. And then um, I said, oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. You, you are one of those young guys that I like to talk to someday. Yes. And here you are. But <laughs> well, you've been doing a lot since, though. You yes. Know, I'm yes. Three uh, awards you've been winning. Uh, you were on TBN. Yes, I was in. That was in 2013 when I released my first book, mm -hmm. uh, The Tale of an Orphan. Um, when I launched it, my first book, The Tale of an Orphan. Um, I was home. You know, after launching that book, there were a lot of you know issues here and there, financial issues, uh, family issues, and my own issues I had to tackle. And I felt that I had to just give up. But I was there somewhere. I woke up one morning, and then I just got this revelation that uh, I should just talk to my publisher. And my publisher is in America. So I told him, I sent an email that God says we should contact TVN. They are going to interview me. And we're there, and then they sent me an invite. So I went to the UK embassy, applied for a visa. They gave me a visa straight away. And I was in London. I was on TVN Europe. It was a huge, huge, huge interview. Wow. Yeah. And, and how did you get the interview? Your publishers got, got in well, touch with them? Well, yeah, my publisher got in touch with them, and then they said, no, this is really... They wanted to read the book? They, they read the book? Yeah, they wanted to read the book. So after that, and then, you know, they picked me up and said, anytime uh, I'm in London, I should be on... I mean, I should let, let them know. And after the show, after the interview, I did a commercial for TVN, you know, and it was just amazing. I mean, that was my first time ever traveling abroad, and it was just amazing. Wow. Yeah, and then wow. In, wow. In, in, in the same year last year, I mean last year when I, after meet, meeting you, uh, I was selected for uh, the 100,000 Poets for Change World Conference. I was the only Ghanaian who happened to be in Italy and Germany for that conference and it was just amazing. It was just amazing. And, and the selection was based on what? Still the book? Um, yeah, actually, the 100,000 Poets for Change is an organization that's run by, you know, my, Michael Rottenberg in the US and he he has been following all that I'm doing on Facebook. Mm. So he said you know he just gave me opportunity to come. But he wanted more poets and writers from Ghana. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's an issue when it comes to these um, applying for a visa, getting a visa to travel abroad. You know, it's a really really hard. But I have since I had traveled before mm -hmm. and then I mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I came back on time. Uh, the Italian numbers gave me a visa and so I flew through Germany and then 
you know, just a little bit of, you know, so a little bit of Germany. And then I went to Italy, Salerno, for the 100,000 poet for Virginia. And there were lots of people from different parts of the mm -hmm. world. And mm -hmm. it was just amazing. You mm -hmm. know, it was a really, really amazing. What about the urban books? Yes, uh, that was um, in America. Urban books, uh, they, they, they selected my book among the, uh, the, the, the first 100 books of 2013. I was, I think, when I was 64. And The Tale of an Orphan was part of it. W was part of the top 100? Top 100, yeah. Show some love, man. Show yeah. some love. Show some love. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and after, after that, there has been lots of, lots of amazing things coming. Uh, when I was in London, I was in London last year for the BAFTA Awards. I was nominated for the BAFTA Awards in the UK. Uh, in the best author ca category. I, I couldn't win that award, mm -hmm. but the nomination was a really a platform for me because I met a lot of film directors. The nomination alone is Yeah, telling, you know? I met a lot of film directors from Nollywood who were, you know, interested in, you know, buying the film right for my book. Then, um, two weeks later, I got a, an email that I've been nominated for the Africa Youth Award for the Literacy Excellence. And by votes, I mean, I won that award. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 so interesting for me. And you were orphaned at a very young age? Yes, uh, I was orphaned at the age of five. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I lost my father at the age of five, and then I lost my mother when I was seven. So literally, I became an orphan at the, at the age of seven. And when I lost my parents, there were lots of people who were saying that, you know, we had killed our parents, you know. That you had killed your parents? Yeah, that, that, was a, that was a story. But I really wanted to prove to people that, you know, the fact that I have lost my parent doesn't mean I've lost my world. I can still become who I want to be if I believe. And I haven't given up on myself. There have been a lot of issues. Um, but God being so good, I had people who, you know, who believed in me. Mr. and Mrs. Chum uh, took care of me, put him in school right from primary. And then they took care of me. And then from there, at every stage, God brings people to be a blessing to me. And, that, and that at what point did you decide to put your experience into the tale of an orphan? Well, it was a point that I was, you know, the, I realized the way, you know, we treat orphans in our society. Uh, many a times in our society, we, 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 we kind of, people are using orphans as a offer tree boxes. Mm. Even, uh, in, mm. even in our countries, trust me, you go to some of the organizations, you see that people donate stuff and they are not taking care of the orphans, you know. That really saddened my heart. So I, told, I decided that, no, let me just come out of myself and then share my story for the world and then help other orphans. So my focus was helping orphans. You know, it wasn't easy putting the story together because one, I knew that people were going to ridicule me, people were going to, you know, mock me and all that. But there's one thing I've learned in, the, in life, that a fowl does not stop scratching just because worms are scarce. You don't have to give up people because people, people are, you know, get, you know, giving up on you, that people don't believe in your dream. You know, it might be a small dream, but then if you believe in yourself, you surely make it happen. Mm. Mm. Yeah, what, 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 what were some of the, the terrible things that happened to you, but you overcame and, 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 didn't, and, and didn't stop? What were some of the experiences that... As an orphan or as a writer? As an orphan. As an orphan. Well, there are a lot of them. I mean, starving. When I decided to live on my own, there were a lot of issues. You know, uh, when I, lived my, I, I left my auntie's place and I, le I was living my own, it was really, really tough. About two weeks, I hadn't taken my bath. Mm. And there were no food. You, you see me, you wouldn't see me like this. I mean, I, I just lost confidence in myself. But in spite of it all, I didn't give up on my dream. And your dream was? My dream, is to be, my dream was to become a, a best-selling author, to become a filmmaker and make sure that one day I can also be a blessing to other people. And today, I ha also have an organization, the Orphan Trust Movement, that, you know, I donate proceeds from the book to give out to other people, other orphans. You know, I've been to uh, 10 orphanages in Ghana mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I wanted to do this. I didn't want the cameras to be on me before I do something because, you know, we all say that Ghana, I mean, we are not moving forward. They are always com complaining, uh, bashing our leaders and all that. But the question is, what are you doing where you are? Mm -hmm. Because mm. it's, not, it's not a matter of what people are talking about, I mean, saying about you. It's a, it's a matter of what you are doing today to get to where you are going tomorrow. Because mm. the truth mm. of the matter is that everyone is going somewhere. To, we are all going somewhere. Fantastic. So you don't have to just focus on your, your past mistakes. Make sure that you focus on what, 
where you are going. Do something today to make sure that you get to where you're going tomorrow. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. Cool, yeah, put a, uh, and, and, and your second book, My Shoes Don't Fit, yes. A Young Man's Conversation with God. Yes. Summarize this for me. because <laughs> I, I Well, just let me just tell you something quick about My Shoes Don't Fit. When I released this book, uh, I, I sent it to my publisher in America, and he didn't want to publish it. Why? Well, he said that I had to, there were, he, there were a lot of mistakes in it. Okay. So I rewrote the book, and then, together, by the, I mean, the support of other, my, uh, other people, uh, I, get, I sent the book abroad for people to read, do the editing, and then afterwards, I put the book on Amazon. You know, I, I, I know a little, about, a little bit about uh, digital publishing, so I put everything online, and then, through the support of my very good friend, Okra Chuchu, uh, we were able to put the book online. And today, I can tell you that this book is just selling, selling like crazy. I, I never thought I was going to sell like that, you know. So, and today he sees, he, he saw the book and he was like, Richard, really, I should have published this book. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, wow. but, you know. What is it about? Well, My Shoes Don't Fit is a breathtaking adventure of a young man who is in the mess in a battle to write about the tragedies of his life. So it's a conversation, a young man who is talking to God about his life. He's talking, to, he's talking about politics, he's talking about uh, relationship, he's talking about anything, anything that, you know, he finds himself in to let God, let God know that his shoes don't fit, mm. you know. So it's just my own way of, you know, let, helping people to understand that, yes, mm -hmm. we are all mm -hmm. wearing shoes and all that, but trust me, some people's shoes, shoes don't fit, <laughs> but you may not see it physically. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, now he wish he had published it. Yes. <laughs> so, so how do people access this? Uh, is it an e-book now? Well, how, it's on how? Amazon as yeah. e-book, and then it's on Amazon as a, a hard copy. Okay. Yeah, you can buy the hard copy as well, and as well as the e-book. Okay. And let me just quickly add this as well, that um, for my first book, last year, I, I, whilst I was in the UK, a couple of film directors in the, I mean, America, Hollywood, contacted me that they were buying the film right for my book. So... The tale of an of an the, yes. So very soon it's going to be in. I mean, it's going to be a movie, and once you are here in Ghana. So you, have, you sold it, or they've just well, the, you're just in the process. They sent me the contract to sign. So I'm contacting a lot. Oh, of they people. made you an offer already? Yes, yes, they it's have a good offer. Uh, yes, it's good. Really? Yes, yes. Hint, hint. How much? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can say that on air. Uh, oh you can yes. Say it on air. Anyway. <laughs> Well, hey, see Hollywood, they're approaching me for my book, man. They offer me $500,000, one million, whatever. <laughs> eh? Yeah, you know, it's wow. something that But I, that's good, man. Showing some yeah. love, man. Showing some love. Yeah. Fantastic. I never thought it was going to happen, you know. But there's one thing that whatever dream you have, you don't have to give up. Mm. Yeah, because, um, you know, those who walk barefoot today will wear golden shoes tomorrow. Mm. And that is the main thing for my new book. That you don't have to give up no matter what people say, no matter what anybody tells you. Mm -hmm. Just keep pushing. Because after releasing my first book, I really wanted to give up. And you know, in Ghana, we don't support writing. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, we, we, if you look at it critically, we invest so much time in the music industry, mm -hmm. the sports industry. But when it comes to the writing industry, mm -hmm. nobody is. We yeah. have the Vodafone yeah. Ghana Music Awards. We don't yeah. have anything like Ghana Writers Award. So um, my encouragement is that all the stakeholders, the telecommunication industries, and uh, they should support writers. Support, yeah, uh, I mean, support literary poets, stuff, yeah, yeah, literary stuff. You know, you can, you know, ch I mean, choose some of us as ambassadors and, you know, to be able to be, a, because that's the way we can help, you know, promote reading in Ghana. Because we always complain that, oh, yeah, Ghanaians don't read. But the Ghanaians will read when you give them that. Some, some yeah, material, yeah. Yeah, something to, something to okay. read, yeah. Okay. Put your hands together, man. And, and Richard, um, I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to spend uh, some time with you yes. and celebrate you. Yes. Uh, well done and, and keep moving. Thank you so and, much. And, uh, you know, yeah. uh, keep the faith. Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. And what, what we are seeing now is just the beginning. Amen. All right. Yeah, I also have a couple of stuff for you. You have something for yeah. me? Yeah, we'll be donating a couple of uh, bags to schools from time to time. And then we have t shirts in there and the bag. Oh, wow. Oh. Yes. oh. <laughs> And pants. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah, my shoes don't fit pants. <laughs> I see. Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> all right. So I also donate this to people. These are no, mine. This, this, these are for you. These are mine. Yeah, but I it, want it, the staff to know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should come to my office and say, hey, manager, I'm going to be. I also do ghost writing jobs. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to tell you about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just a writer, because ghost writing pays. Yeah. Yeah. A my lot. first ghost writing pay, I mean, was I, I was paid 400 pounds. Even though that was not enough, but now I'm charging more than I mean, about yeah. two thousand dollars plus. You know, so let's look at how best you can you know bring. We, we, we can help writers because trust me, writing can help boost our economy. Mm. Seriously, I know. Yes, I know. Yeah. So let's because it seems like in Ghana we have shifted our attention to one side. Let's look at it because there are a lot of young people out there who want to write, who are writing. You know, poets out there. Let's give them the opportunity. Let's not just invest in music alone. It's good you are investing in music, but let's also look at the other side of it because you see, there should be a balance. But as it is, it is this way, you know. So, so like we encourage more people to come into the writing industry. I've had the time to travel to so many places and realize that you know people really treat me as a writer. But here in Ghana, you come here and then oh, oh yeah, wine. yeah, oh yeah, wine. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I hear you, and I know exactly yes. what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's really painful. Trust me. Yeah, I, it has been a lot of, uh, I mean, sad moment for mm -hmm. me as a writer. Mm -hmm. But I had to brush them off because I know where I'm going. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Put your hands together, man. And uh, really, thank you so much. And uh, so much too. The shoes. Uh, let me quickly say this. Let me thank the people who have helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, S. C. Johnson. Thank you so much, my very good friend, Okra Chuchu. Thank you so much, uh, all the people, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chum, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Inkansa. Thank you so much for all that you've done for me. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, and God bless you too. All right, folks, stick around. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your Swagalicious Sugar Daddy will be right back.